I have recently discovered that I have 33 different identities. Can you imagine? <laughs> How many identities do you think you have? Have you ever thought of that? We'll get back to that. As you learned today, I'm a mom of three kids, and a few years ago, I wanted to send my children to a summer camp in the United States. This particular camp that I wanted to send them, it was very special. It had everything from STEM activities to sports to arts and crafts, you name it. In a nutshell, this was the camp to go to. Except there was one tiny little problem. Do you know what it was? The damn camp was very expensive. <laughs> it cost $8,000 per child for the summer. And I have three kids, so you can do the math. It wasn't something I was ready to do. So do you know what I did? Any guesses? Huh? What did I do? <laughs> okay, let's, 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 let's hear the story. So I decided to become a tennis instructor <laughs> to barter my time with the cost of camp's tuition. <laughs> so I met with the camp's owner, and I was very honest and straightforward with him. I told him, look, I'm not a tennis player, or I'm a, not a tennis instructor, like a professional one, but I'm a mom of three kids. I know how to handle children, I've worked with people throughout my entire professional career. And most importantly, I just love playing tennis. And guess what? He hired me during the interview, and all three of the kids got to go to camp for free. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> but if you think that being a tennis instructor was the only identity experiment I had, Think again, because I used to be a ballroom dance instructor when I was in college while majoring in biochemistry to become a doctor. So a friend, friend of mine told me, if you want to learn something, go teach. So that's exactly what I did. So by now you can tell that I've been a restless soul most of my life, but more importantly, I've been very curious and a hardworking person from a very young age. I wanted to try my abilities in everything. And I didn't care what labels other people would put on me. When I was in college, I was very focused on my studies. So one of my biology professors approached me after class one day and he told me, Anna, I appreciate all the tenacity and the hard work you're putting into your studies, and I'm sure this will pay off someday. But sometimes, you must stop and smell the roses. And at the time, I didn't really get the meaning behind what he was trying to tell me. And I guess it was his way of trying to tell me that life is both hard work and a joyous experience not to be missed. But by then, I had been bitten by the finance bug, especially coming back from a former Soviet Union country. I couldn't believe that regular people like you and I could own shares of publicly traded companies. The whole thing was so fascinating to me. So I switched gears, changed majors, jumped into finance, and dove deep into numbers and charts and plans and graphs. So today, I am a financial planner. And I've been one for the last 20 years. And when I get introduced to people as a financial consultant, I notice that many of them have certain perceptions and assumptions about me and who I should be. I guess because of my job title or my professional attire, they assume that I must be a serious person or perhaps a boring individual who just likes numbers and charts more than anything else. But there is so much more to me than just being a financial consultant. 
just like there is so much more to human beings than being put in a box with one label. Remember about my 33 identities? <laughs> Do you want me to list them? <laughs> no. I'll just give you a few of them. I'm Armenian and an American. I'm a mom of three kids, as you learned today. I'm the founder of Get Skills Academy, and the list goes on. And when you have identities, having different identities is like wearing different hats. So when I take off the hat of the financial planner, I go salsa dancing with my niece, Maria, <laughs> in my sweats and sneakers, and I also make lots of funny jokes, because that's also who I am. Throughout my professional career, I've come across many successful individuals. Unfortunately, vast majority of them identify primarily with their job titles. But when you do that, it's just like looking at a Da Vinci painting and thinking, wow, what a great frame. So when you identify someone based on, solely based on their job title, or when you make assumptions about a person without getting to know them, it's just like looking at a painting, but admiring the frame more than the painting itself. So what lies in identity? What is the true meaning behind identity? And how do we define it? I've come to realize that we all have several layers to ourselves, just like roses have petals. And as we go through life, those layers get created and form our identities. And depending on what kinds of experiences we go through, some of these identities become more important and relevant, and some diminish and new ones emerge. And especially when we go through difficult points in our lives, those moments become the catalyst for us to form even newer, more vibrant layers to ourselves. And I have had my fair share of going through difficulties in life. I was living my perfectly planned life with daily business, weekly activities, sports and fitness, playing tennis, social commitments, when completely out of nowhere, a stage three cancer showed up at my doorstep. As you can imagine, it was a very traumatic experience for me and my family. So, was I ready for that? Financially speaking, I was ready. I was prepared. I had spent years planning, investing, and saving for precisely moments like these. But mentally and emotionally, I was not prepared at all. While going through chemotherapy treatments, I had lost over 10 kilograms. I had gone from size six to size zero. I couldn't even recognize myself in the mirror. My clothes were swimming around my body. So how do you think a financially cautious person like myself would have handled a situation like that? You'll never believe it. Because I went on luxury shopping sprees buying expensive clothes and shoes and accessories, and let's not forget about all the jewelry that I purchased. I was spending money for size zero Anna as if there is no tomorrow. Even though in the back of my mind I knew that eventually I would complete the treatments, probably gain the weight back, and most likely not fit into any of those new clothes still. It's as if I had completely lost my rational mind. For a while, battling cancer had become my new job and my new identity. And it opened my eyes to many truths that I will carry with myself for the rest of my life. But eventually, 
after winning the cancer battle and slowly coming back to my usual self, I've come to realize that I had to be taken to the edge of my life in order to learn to embrace my emotions. Cancer was the way the universe told me to go back to my roots and to re-examine myself, to re-examine my fundamental values and beliefs, to figure out who I really am. Why was I put on this earth? What's my purpose in life? And more importantly, what will my legacy be? And that episode of the shopping spree was a big learning curve for me to, to recognize that our choices and decisions are very often based on our emotional needs. So what have I learned from this? And how have I changed? Going through cancer experience has made me much more sensitive. It has taught me to appreciate my life more deeply. More importantly, I've learned to value my time, to cherish each moment and each day here and now, not to put things off for tomorrow because there may not be a tomorrow, to choose to be happy and healthy every single day. Believe it or not, going through camphor has made me into a happier person. I know it's, it's difficult to believe, but that's true. Everything seems brighter to me and more vibrant. And I notice all the beauty and simplicity of life all around me. Those months of chemotherapy treatments and hospital visits made me very sensitive to other people's pain. And also, the last months of chemotherapy treatments coincided with the end of 44-day war of 2020. And that's when I decided to establish the Thrive Armenia Foundation to work with people in need, offering educational programs, renovating schools and facilities, and helping and bettering the lives of people in Armenia's villages. It had to take over 20 years to discover who I really am. In other words, it had to take over 20 years and a life-threatening illness in order for me to finally wake up and smell the roses just like my professor told me so many years ago. My life changed forever when I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer but it also changed for the better. It's as if the old Anna died and the new, more sensitive, more grateful and happier Anna emerged. Someone very close to me told me that I had changed very much as a person after cancer. So much so that as if I had transformed into a completely different human being. But you know what I think? The real me was always inside, waiting for the right moment to be unleashed. So today, I'm very happy with all of my identities and all of my layers. I'm content that on the one hand, I can be a high-ranking officer of a Fortune 500 company, Yet on the other hand, I can be just a simple tennis instructor concurrently. Now I choose to identify first as a mom and wife, a person with strong sense of empathy for other human beings who happens to be a financial consultant, who happens to love to play tennis and skiing and dancing, adventure, I've learned to appreciate all of my layers and not limit my identity to just one. In nature, there is no flower with one petal, just like there are no human beings with just one layer. So when I look at all of you here today, do you know what I see? 
What? <laughs> Close. <laughs> I see a beautiful garden that's blooming. So my dears, embrace your petals. Humankind needs beautiful gardens of rich roses. And remember to stop and smell those roses. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.